Hi, I'm Tas Monopoly, cosmetic chemist and trainer here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make an anti-acne BB cream. Now let me show you how easy it is to put together. Okay, so firstly I have my water phase here. Now I'm going to, to build my BB cream structure, I am going to uh, make a slurry here using my glycerin and my sclerotium gum. This is the Ulta Gelatium. Now, when making a BB cream or any sort of product that has like colorants, pigments, or any other sort of particles, you will need to have a Realogy modifier like the sclerotium gum um, that has good particle suspension. Otherwise, the particles will um, they'll either you know sink to the bottom, they won't be properly dispersed, um, or they'll float to the to the top, it just depends on the product. So you wanna have something with good particle suspension. Xanthan gum is also another good one that has particle suspension. You don't wanna to use too much glycerin in a leave-on product either. Uh, too much in a leave-on will feel uh, sticky and tacky. So I'm not using a very big input here. Okay, it's gonna give that one there a stir. and we're gonna pop our water phase on heat. Okay, so while that's heating, I am gonna to put together my oil phase here. In my bowl, I have some Olive 1000 by Hallstar. This is a good non-ionic uh, emulsifier. It's also a naturally derived one, so good for natural or organic formulations. And to this, I'm gonna be adding some glycerol stearate citrate, just for some extra stability um, and also viscosity as well. I'm gonna be adding some Codamol GTCC, which is my Capric Capric Triglycerides. This is a medium skin feel uh, lipid. Now, something really important uh, with a BB cream, you wanna have a good balance of lipids in here. You don't want anything too heavy. You don't want anything too greasy. You want a really good balance. You don't want anything too drying either. So it's good to combine something medium with a, a smaller input of something heavy and then something obviously uh, light as well. So I'm going to be adding some jojoba oil. This is a nice uh, light feeling plant oil. It's technically actually a wax ester. So it's got a really good like light and balancing uh, skin feel to it. I actually really love jojoba oil. It's one of my favorites. And I'm just going to be adding a small input here of a plant oil. I'm choosing some pumpkin seed. This is just going to add just a little bit of richness, a little bit more emolliency just to get that good uh, balance of the skin feel. Now, I am gonna be adding my pigment in here. Now, this is a special one I'm gonna be using here. So this is the Enhance UT in the medium shade. And this is by ADP Cosmetics. So these ones, this one here is actually a blend already, so I don't need to mix uh, any other iron oxides or pigments to get this color. It already comes in medium. They also do light and then also like a heavier, warmer, uh, tone as well. So they've also got the one in light. Uh, this is the one in rich. So this is probably more for the tanner or darker skin tones. And then they obviously have uh, the individual so you can make up your own blend or if you need to make one of the blends lighter, darker, richer, warmer, etc. They also have them in the individual ones as well. Got yellow and then also black. Now, these ones here that I'm using today have, are made with titanium dioxide, but they also have the, the exact same made with zinc oxide instead. So it really depends uh, what you want to use. Now, these clients are really cool and special because they actually provide obviously some SPF protection, uh, damage prevention, and also some skin soothing properties. They cover uh, UVB and obviously UVA. So if you are looking to add these into your BB cream for the SPF benefits as well, obviously you'd need to get your BB cream SPF tested. They're also 100% natural, Cosmos and EcoCert approved. They're suitable for sensitive and atopic tendency uh, skin types. They're also microbiome friendly, antimicrobial properties as well. And it does say here in the brochure that 2.5 to 3.5 SPF units per 1% products. So an SPF 50 product would need about 15% of one of these filters. 
Now in a small lab sample, you will need to just gently grind these in a coffee grinder before adding it to your emulsion. So I'm just gonna add it into the lid of my coffee grinder here and then I'm just gonna pour it into my coffee grinder. Now this is gonna help with just breaking it down uh, so it's more of a fine powder. Um, so your emulsion becomes more smooth and not lumpy. So I'm just gonna give that a grind there. And I'm just gonna add my colorant blend into my oil phase there. Okay, once this is all melted and homogenous, we're just gonna add that into our water phase. And we're just gonna remove that from the heat. Just gonna continue to give that a stir while it cools. And then we're gonna add our heat sensitive material. So while that's cooling, I'm just gonna talk you through some of the actives I'm gonna be choosing for the anti-acne uh, BB cream. Now the first one is this Cutie Biome by CLR. Well, this has been used before in some videos. This actually reduces the growth and the biofilm formation of most virulent uh, phyllotypes of C. acnes. It also has some potent anti-inflammatory effects. It noticeably reduces sebum. It also helps restore the balance to oily and troubled skin. It fights the appearance of spots, shine and blocked pores. It also targets breakouts of pimples for a healthy balanced complexion. And just bringing up some efficacy data here for acne. So um, the activity of cutie biome used at 3% on acne was assessed in an eight week application study. So the application was twice daily on the face uh, before study one week washout phase, no use of cosmetics or oral anti-acne products. There were 20 volunteers uh, aged between 17 and 42. So 16 female and four males with mild to moderate acne. And over that eight week period, the sebum production was reduced by almost 41% uh, shown in figure one here below. And 13 out of the 20 volunteers already showed reduction of sebum after one week into the study. And then also 65% of the volunteers also reported that they felt their skin was less oily after one week of that formulation. So pretty good results there for an anti-acne active. And the next one I'm gonna be using is the Apollon. Now this Apollon has a couple of benefits here. So it provides soft focus effect on the skin. So it has a roughness of, uh, reduces the roughness of skin texture and also pores. So you can see here a BB cream with Apollon provides more effective soft focus effects in six hours than silica does. Um, it also keeps the skin uh, pretty hydrated as well. And it also has some strong prevention from the spread of sebum across the face or across the skin. So another really good active to use there. So I'm just gonna go and add these into my BB cream. Now I'm also gonna go in with my preservative here. Um, I'm gonna use some aloe vera extract as well. This is soothing, hydrating and moisturizing. And then of course some Turcoferol. I'm not gonna add any fragrances or essential oils into my BB cream. Um, I actually used to have quite a bit of acne when I still sometimes do get it when I was younger and I used to be very sensitive to fragrances and even essential oils. It would really make my acne flare up a lot more and be more red. So I'm not adding any of that in here either. And aloe vera is also quite calming as well, as well as the soothing, which I mentioned earlier. You can also add some other soothing or calming agents in here, something like allantoin or some, you know, some chamomile or something in there would also help. But the cutie biome is also an anti-inflammatory active as well, so that's going to help a lot. Okay, so last thing to do is we're going to check and adjust our pH. And we're just going to cover our BB cream and let it sit overnight. This is just to test the viscosity and obviously the stability of it. We'll come back the next day. Okay, so this is what my BB cream is looking like the next day. As you can see, that's thickened up quite a bit. So 
It's really nice and stable. It's got a really good uh, viscosity. It looks really, really thick, but it's actually quite light and fluffy, which is what you want with a BB cream. BB creams aren't meant to be heavy, thick, or very good coverage. Uh, they're meant to be very light, like a tinted moisturizer. So it's more of an everyday thing. It's actually quite a good, almost quite a good match to my skin. I'm actually quite pale, quite white um, and fair skin. Uh, so it's, it is hard to sometimes find a perfect match, but that's that's almost there. Now it's not sticky or tacky. It's really, like I said before, it's really nice, light and fluffy. It spreads really well. It's got a tiny bit of coverage, but not much. Well, there you go. That's how easy it is to make an anti-acne BB cream. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on the rest of our videos. Happy formulating.